you want to die tonight? What's your favorite scary movie? Scream rejuvenated the slasher genre in the 90s, and ever since, there have been sequels and television reboots aplenty. Today, I will rank every film in the series along with every season of the television show. This video does contain spoilers for the Scream franchise. In total, there are four films and three TV seasons. So let's begin the ranking with number seven. This is a reboot, and reboots don't play by your rules. Nice action! Scream Resurrection is the third and final season of the Scream television reboot. When this was announced, many people were turned off due to the fact that it was abandoning the storyline of the previous two seasons and bringing on a whole new cast and crew. They even fired the showrunners. Of course, I was skeptical as well, but I was kind of excited for a new take on the franchise. It was sold as a return to form with the original Ghostface mask being used and the return of the original voice of Ghostface. However, what we got was something that doesn't even deserve to be a part of the franchise, in my opinion. Firstly, the season was sabotaged by having to deal with the aftermath of Harvey Weinstein, a man whose name is unfortunately attached to this franchise, and this led to a three-year hold on the show getting to air. The Weinstein company was scraped from any credits, and in another act of self-sabotage, they decided to not air the show on MTV, and instead premiere the season on VH1 over three nights, with the finale airing two days after the premiere. Crazy, right? However, after watching the season, it's clear that they couldn't have maintained a large audience over six weeks, and they really were just putting it all out at once so that it could get to Netflix quicker. With all the behind-the-scenes drama aside, this season does nothing when it comes to adding to the franchise. First of all, they should have realized that it's incredibly hard to reboot such a well-known franchise, let alone reboot from film to television. And they should have considered themselves lucky that they already completed that task in the first season of the show, and they left the second season with a good chunk of surviving characters that would have made for an interesting third season. But no, they took all of that for granted and decided to make it way harder on themselves. And dear god, it did not pay off at all. It reuses the same tropes and setup as the first film and the first season of the TV series, but it manages to bring nearly nothing unique to the table. Aside from the most diverse cast in the franchise, which is applaudable, but it surely doesn't make up for the writing and everything else. The twist at the end and killer reveal makes very little sense, and it's probably only worth a watch on two times speed. Visually, nothing stands out, and everything just looks kind of bland and poorly lit. The kills are rarely memorable, with the exception of maybe one, where someone gets split from the middle of the torso down thanks to a saw through an elevator but even that scene pales in comparison to most of the kills in the rest of the franchise. Another scene features a decent character being burned alive in a car, which could have been really effective if it weren't ruined by awful sound design and inconsistent fire effects. It drags on the whole way through, and even though it's only 6 episodes, it feels like 12. The cast delivers performances ranging from bad to meh, with the exception of Kiki Palmer, RJ Seiler, and the tiny doses of Mary J. Blige. The cast did the best with what they were given, which wasn't much, which is a shame. This is the only installment of the franchise that I would not recommend even fans of Scream to give a shot, and it is the only one that I would never subject myself to rewatch. Ah, uh, the first reboot of the Scream franchise. And hey, it's not awful. It's very MTV, and it spends a lot of time rehashing certain scenarios and characters that were already explored in the films. With that being said, it does have its moments, and by all means, I think it's leaps and bounds ahead of Scream Resurrection. If I were in charge of rebooting Scream for television, though, the last thing I would change would be the ghost face mask. It could be argued that it's not Scream if it doesn't have its most iconic icon, Ghostface. But despite the comparatively lackluster mask, the season's killer is intriguing, and they played up the whole whodunit angle of the series in order to propel the story for multiple episodes. It does get lost along the way, but in the end, it paid off. It gets some credit for taking such a hefty task that is rebooting Scream for a television audience and not completely fumbling. The characters are somewhat interesting despite many clear knockoffs from the films. And the dramatized plot twists are effective, especially in binge viewing. It's certainly a guilty pleasure show, but it knows that, and I think that's one of the reasons it was able to function as its own entity. 
Scream 3. This film was advertised as the conclusion to the Sidney Prescott story, and it does function as a send-off to these characters. The sole problem with this film is Courtney Cox's bangs. Just kidding, there are a lot more problems than that, but honestly I think the trajectory of the film series is personified by Courtney Cox's hair. But with that aside, the real issues with the film all stem from the fact that Kevin Williamson did not serve as a writer on this film. So after Williamson wrote the first Scream, he additionally wrote five page treatments for Scream 2 and 3, and due to other commitments, he was unable to develop a script for this film. It's been said that Aaron Kruger, the screenwriter for Scream 3, discarded Williamson's notes for his script, which is understandable from a writer's perspective, but also a bit unforgivable in hindsight when looking at the final product. Not only did Scream 3's screenplay suffer from a writer swap, but it also suffered from recent societal pressures and constant rewrites. Due to the open dialogue about film's impact on crimes following the tragic Columbine shooting, the studio had major concerns for the film's perception. This resulted in the story focusing more on the comedic, self-referential aspects of the previous two films, rather than the gore and horror that made the first two films so balanced. Of course, the final product was a mess, and it is incredibly over the top and tonally confused. The shift from Woodsboro to Hollywood was questionable, and having the characters interact with actors who are portraying them in the fictional Stab franchise is just unnecessary. Also, by exploring the Stab series in this film, like they're making a third Stab movie, but it's still depicting the events of the first film, it just doesn't make any sense, and it feels like no one really thought out anything that happens in this movie. The new life given to Sydney's mother, Maureen Prescott, is really dumb, although it did allow for a Carrie Fisher cameo. I could go on about my problems with the film, but it is redeemed by the cast and Wes Craven's directing touch, and it's for sure a fun film to watch. It just doesn't hold up compared to the quality of its predecessors. There is a new killer out there. Exactly. We're starting at two. By having this season be a direct continuation of the first season, it allows for the viewer to start to be invested in these characters, and the season has some effective new additions to the cast. The drama is intensified, and so is the horror. The Scream TV series is, by nature, a teen drama, and that's what separates it from the films, despite the contextual similarities. But season 2 really plays into the teen drama aspect, and honestly, it did Riverdale better than Riverdale before Riverdale even existed. I haven't rewatched the second season since it aired, but I do remember it being a big step up from the first season, and it really came into its own. It did have a weird two-part Halloween special attached to the end of the season, which unfortunately serves as a series finale in terms of these characters and storylines. I didn't enjoy those episodes, but I don't really consider it a part of season two because it aired months later after the events of the season had concluded. But with that episode out of the picture, season two is an impressive sophomore effort into the television reboot, and it really sucks that we'll never get to see what the showrunners would have done in season three if MTV hadn't completely fired the entire cast and crew. The fourth installment of the franchise reunited Kevin Williamson with Wes Craven to bring Scream into a new decade. The result was, in my opinion, remarkably solid. Scream 4 course corrects back to the tone of the first two films while still taking some risks in terms of altering the formula that made the first two films so successful. The result is a pretty good Scream film. It has everything you want from the franchise, but it isn't reinventing the wheel by any means. The flaws in the film lie in the fact that it brings new characters just to fill in the tropes of the original film. They're very self-aware with this though, but nonetheless, it couldn't have hurt to be a little bit more creative in terms of specifically the characters Robbie and Charlie. The killer twist is satisfying, however I find it a bit redundant how yet another one of Sidney Prescott's family members was under the mask. Robbie has to be my least favorite part of the film because they just throw all of the barely realized 2011 technology onto him, and he and all of the technology in this movie unfortunately really dates the film. Like Scream 1 and 2 had technology from the 90s, yet for the most part, it doesn't feel tacky or like anything is made up, and those two are timeless in a way that Scream 4 just isn't. None of the technology in this movie makes sense. I mean, this guy can live stream for hours on end with a tiny little camera on his head that isn't connected to internet with just one press of a button. I mean, a ghost face app, Facebook, flip phones. But technology aside, Scream 4 brings back the originals without feeling like they're different characters. It has clever callbacks and critiques of earlier installments in the season, while still subverting the audience's expectation and delivering some solid twists. 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 I can't say that word. Fuck it.
This sequel did so many things correctly, the shift from high school to college was really smart, and they really used the university setting to its advantage. Some of my favorite parts of the movie revolve around these characters navigating through campus, either looking for the killer or running from the killer. There are a lot of really inventive scenes, and this scene where Dewey and Gale are being pursued by Ghostface is very well done, but my favorite scene of the film has to be the one where Sydney and, insert character name here, are trapped in the cop car with the killer. This film stands with the original without tarnishing it at all. The tension is ever present and it has just as much rewatch value as its predecessor. The film does become a bit weaker in the third act with a lackluster killer reveal, mostly due to the fact that we barely see this character behind the mask until she is revealed. But looking past that, Scream 2 is an immensely enjoyable sequel that treads new ground without trying too hard to emulate the beats and moments that made Scream work so well. Everybody's a suspect! Really, nothing can beat the original. This movie is iconic, and I'm not using that word lightly. It rejuvenated the genre, while also being a pop culture staple of the 90s. Despite being 20 years old, there are very few moments where it looks outdated, and the whole film holds up remarkably. This film is what got me interested in the horror genre, and it was one of the first franchises that completely captivated me from my childhood into adulthood. It has the best, most effective opening scene of the franchise, and the twist of Drew Barrymore being killed off in the first 10 minutes is genius. The reveal of the killers is masterful, and Matthew Lillard and Skeet Ulrich sell Billy and Stu completely. And there are just so many moments in this film that are expertly orchestrated by Wes Craven. And damn, I could speak praises for this film all day, but chances are you've seen it and you understand. Alright, so there you have it. That is my personal ranking of every installment of the Scream franchise. If you've seen it all, be sure to drop your ranking in the comments below. I'd be really interested to see it. If you've only seen the movies, feel free to rank those in the comments below as well, or just tell me what you agreed with or disagreed with in the video. I'd also really appreciate it if you could give this video a thumbs up if you've made it this far. It helps get the video recommended to more people. Subscribe if you want, and I'll see you soon.